Jim, another fantastic performance. Um, just on front. Yep. How are you feeling now? You've had a little bit of time to sort of reflect on your your time out there. Uh, you know, it, it, it things just get more sore. Um, <laughs> you know, it uh, it it was a good fight. Um, it's kind of the way I had it going in my head as I was training for this one. You know, I, I mean, I had uh, almost a full training camp for Gabriel uh, about a year ago, uh, and then you know he un unfortunately got hurt, had to pull out. Um, so, like, I, I knew what the fight was going to be like. I, I knew what to expect. Um, you know, super tough dude. Uh, heavy leg kicks, good straight punches. Um, but I knew I'd have an advantage on the mat. And, uh, you know, like, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I've heard that, like, he's the hardest kicker, leg kicker at, at AKA. And it's like, all right, hold my beer, you know. <laughs> like, like well, we can... Uh, we, we can see about that. So, yeah, that's the way I expected it. A uh, good, tough fight. And uh, kind of like like I sat here, you know, a few days ago and said, you know, like uh, even though the, the opportunity to fight at 300 was on the shelf or, you know, there in front of me, uh, I wasn't going to do anything that uh, tonight that, that wasn't, uh, you know, Jim Miller style. So I went out there. I fought like I always try to fight, you know. Sometimes I, I fall a little short. Um, but like my goal in every fight that I've ever been in is to come out and to be as violent as I can and, and to get that finish. Like that's the only way I'm happy is if I if I put somebody away. It's funny you mentioned that Jim Miller style. It's it's kind of crazy, right? I feel like in this sport we're so used to someone being good, 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 and then suddenly they overnight they they fall off and they're mm. they're nowhere near the skill level. But you have maintained the same level and consistency throughout your whole career. First of all, what do you attribute that to? And secondly, do you just see like well, I'm just going to keep going until that day comes or I'm going to know before anyone else does and I'm going to get out before that day comes. Um, I, I'm going to I'm going to know, really. And it's not the fights um, necessarily. Right. Uh, it's, it's more so the training camps, um, you know, like training, training as a 40 year old lightweight, you know, like uh, I, I, I have to make. Uh, I have to make concessions, you know, on every day, like it's, it's about sacrificing certain things like my my goals. When I, when I step onto the mat to train is to be healthy and then to be in shape and then to be good at what I'm good at and then to be ready for what my opponent brings. So I'm, I'm not going to do anything like the silly stuff, like starting bad positions, all this stuff. Oh, this guy's good at arm bars. Let's start in an arm bar. Like, no, like we're, we're been there, done that. You know, uh, I've got those reps in. So, um, yeah, like if, if I can't make it through the camps, then, then I know it's going to be uh, it's time to hang them up. Um, the other side of that, what I attribute this career to, it, there's too much. Like, I, I could go on for an hour, I think. Uh, you know, uh, the, the lazy answer is luck and genetics, uh, you know. But uh, there's, there's been a lot. There, there's definitely a lot, you know. I, uh, about a decade ago, right, um, decided to start my own gym and, you know, uh, go to the small small gym, right? And, and, and do it with a small team of guys that I can trust um, that can give me the looks that I need and, and make sure that I'm healthy and improving uh, and, and not have to deal with some of the things that you have to deal with at big gyms. You know, like, there, there's definitely a positive to it, but then, like, one of the reasons that I left and, and started my, like, there was, there was too many negatives. There's too many negatives. It's like, oh, here's this, you know, random Chechenian or something like that. Doesn't speak English. We can't tell him what, you know, what to do. And he's, he's like stomping knees and stuff like that, you know. So because uh, it's like, hey, he could, he, he's got potential, which is great, you know. And, it, it, and you want the guy to come in and, and help you become a better fighter. But there are a lot of careers that have been cut short by injuries in rounds that they didn't need to do in the gym you know, and, and, and silly mistakes. Um, and also going to that small gym where then I was, I was kind of the guy in control, uh, of, of my own, you know, destiny. Like there's a, there's positives to that and there's negatives to that. I mean, I mean, having somebody push you is great, but I've always been able to push myself. So like, I've got great guys. They'll do what I ask, you know, and, and push the hell out of me. Um, but it's like, as you as you get into your mid to late 30s as a fighter it's like the number of bad days that you have on the mats it goes up quite a bit 
You know, when you're 26, it's like you have one bad day a year. When you're 36, it's, you know, it's like a, riding a roller coaster. So while, while there are a lot of great coaches, you know, around the world and they love their guys, they're, they're not inside their body. They don't know what they feel like. And I, and I feel like uh, if the fighters had a little bit, I don't know, like we're more willing maybe to say like, hey, coach, today might not be the day. You know, it's sparring day, but today might not be the day for me. You know, and, and the problem is you, you, you feel like a bitch. <laughs> like, it's, it's hard. You know, like, we, we, we get into a cage and beat the crap out of each other. And it's like, it's hard to tell somebody that you, you, you care about and you know that cares about you and that wants you to be successful. Mm, we need to throttle back today. That's a really difficult thing to do. So, like, me not having to do that and me being able to gauge it myself, I think, saved me a lot of injuries in the gym so that I can still be coming into the octagon healthy and, and fighting well. I feel like every single time you've been in front of us for the last multiple years, right, UFC 300 has been the question, yep. been the storyline. It's here. Yeah. You have it now. It's right there. Is Paul <laughs> Felder the guy that you think you should step in there and celebrate that occasion with? I, um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, you know, like Paul and I almost fought, uh, when was that, 15, 2015? Um, you know, I... I I think it's. I think that fight is would be brutal. Like I think that is a a brutal fight. Me and him locked in a cage for 15 minutes. Uh, I also think that that Matt Brown fight is amazing as well. I think it's awesome because one, I don't have to cut weight, and two, <laughs> uh, you know, he's the guy with like the most finishes at, at welterweight. I'm the guy with most finishes at lightweight. Like this, that's a fight for 300, right? Like, let's put on a show. Let's go out. Let's entertain. You know, and and uh, I'm, I'm willing to, to move up in weight for, you know, that type of event. Like, it's not like I'm, you know, trying to, uh, you know, uh, get my rankings up or anything like that, particularly 300. I would hop in at any moment if, if Sean called me for those types of fights. Honestly, Sean, if you're watching. <laughs> but, uh, you know, yeah, like I, I, I want to I wanna put on a, an epic show with two, you know, uh, Two badass dudes that have been around for a bit, and I think Matt might be that guy. I got a question. Yes, sir. So congratulations on the win. Thank you. Um, would you notice now, like obviously you're not the same fighter you were back then, mm -hmm. but would you notice now it's harder for you to get into fight condition at 40 than at 26? And obviously now, how do you how do you feel now after the win? Besides. You know your your emotions, but your body. Um, you know, fight condition is not. It's changed. Right. Like I, I was constantly training, you know, like it would be like I, I'd go through a fight like this and I'd be back in the gym in, you know, five days. Um, so I'm going to need a little bit more time because the recovery doesn't happen like it used to. But uh, I'd say like getting into fight shape, fight conditioning is it's it's really it's it's just different. You know, I uh, I've got great coaches in Martin Rooney and Nick Berenger who helped me with my diet and strength and conditioning. Um, and I, th I think we've got things dialed in pretty well. Um, I might not always listen to my dietitian, uh, <laughs> but, but uh, you know, like, yeah, I, I think we've got things worked out. Uh, you know, I had, a, I had a period in my career a few years ago where I felt like I wasn't getting into shape. I wasn't um, conditioned enough, and we kind of figured that out. And, um, you know, also, like, the, 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 the whole sleep thing, like if I could tell anybody, like sleep, get eight hours hours of sleep, just please. It's it's a it's a a free performance enhancing thing. <laughs> like it's the best, uh, you know. And I used to be a five hour a night kind of guy and just caffeinate the heck out of myself. So, um, but yeah, like I, uh, my body has changed and yeah, I'm 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 different. I'm different now than I was. I think I fight a lot smarter. Um, I think I'm, I'm having more fun out there, which makes me more dangerous, honestly, uh, because I used to have such bad tunnel vision that I would miss things. Uh, but yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna sit here and try to be, you know, the the fighter I was when I was 26. Also, what what would you like to see for the rest of your career? Like, what would be the textbook for for Mr. Miller? I don't know. Um, you know, yeah, get a get a 
get a great fight on 300. Um, I, like I said, you know, in the a couple of days ago, I don't know if Bruce will introduce me as Jim fucking Miller. I don't, I don't know if he swears while he's working. You know, he definitely swears when he's not. But uh, <laughs> yeah, right. So um, yeah, I think it'd be cool. I think it'd be cool to you know maybe open the pay per view with that. Uh, I think doing that in front of a, you know, the T-Mobile full fans would be awesome. I think that would get me super fired up. Um, and then after that, you know, like let's let's put on some great fights. Um, you know, it, I I I don't I'm I'm not the type to name names. Um, so like, there's there's lots of guys out there that I'd I'd love to get the opportunity to share the octagon with. Not uh, names, but 50 fights and 30 wins would either one of those numbers uh, interest you? Uh, 30 wins would be pretty awesome. You know, um, that would be that would be really awesome. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm not really like hanging myself on any any of the numbers. To be perfectly honest, like I think that. Uh, you know, who I am it, and, and the legacy that I have isn't those numbers. It's, it's how I've carried myself through the, the ups and downs that I've had to deal with. And, uh, you know, I, when, when a guy like Mike Bisping, you know, like is, is complimenting me inside the octagon, like pff, that's, uh, it means the world to me, you know, like, so, um, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to do what I'm I'm doing, uh, and I'll make the decisions on you know like next steps. But yeah, but uh, I let's just keep going for now. <laughs> you got a, another fifty thousand dollar performance of the night. Uh, have anything on the top of your head? What you, what you're doing with that? Um, <laughs> have you seen prices at the grocery store? Uh, you know, I got four kids and they're getting older and they eat like friggin' horses. Uh, yeah, no, you know, like hopefully uh, focus on assets at this point, you know, something that can pay me more, make me more money. So not, a, not a new tractor. No, not a, I, I was telling my wife that I would like a bigger tractor, but in order to get a bigger tractor, I need more land. So, uh, I think I need to take that first step. Makes sense. And then finally for me, um, Nicholas Moda fought on the prelims, mm -hmm. and uh, he said back here that um, he hoped to tell you that, like, his situation was almost like he fought somebody coming, mm -hmm. coming off a UFC debut. He's the veteran, and he went out and knocked him out, just like what you did to him. Mm -hmm. So I guess kinda, is that kind of cool, just like a full circle moment? Uh, kind of, yeah. You know, I mean, it's uh, he's, a, he's a good dude. He's a great fighter. I love watching him fight. Um, yeah, so it's uh, it's – uh, you know, like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't know, like ruin it by saying, but like, you know, the, the respect that I get from my peers, like it, it's, uh, it's, it means everything to me, you know? So like, you know, that's, uh, I think that's what we should all, you know, be striving for is the people that have been in the trenches with you to, to understand what you've done. And, um, yeah, like if I can, uh, if I can have a, a positive effect on, you know, some of these newer guys' careers and the way they, the way they go about it and the way they carry themselves, then, then uh, that makes me happy. Going back to the, uh, right here, hmm? how you want Bruce to introdu uh, introduce you, were you surprised at how um, the fans kind of like really got behind that immediately and were really supportive or have you noticed the fans have always kind of been supportive of that sort of stuff with you? Um, I, they've always been kind of supportive of that stuff, you know, like, so, uh, I, I expected, I didn't expect it to like explode like it did. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, uh, it's, uh, you know, I, I earned that nickname, right? Like I earned that nickname by the way that I do business inside the octagon and, and even outside, right? Like, and and I earned that nickname from a guy that was at, you know, matchmaking at UFC two. So uh, to yeah, for when when Joe Joe Silva calls you calls you that, it's uh, it's it's pretty cool. So um, yeah, I'm glad that the the fans are behind it, and you know, it's not the it's not the the the, the easiest nickname to <laughs> to promote, but you know, it's there. Would you settle for a effing? I would. Uh, well, not in the octagon. No, come on. He's got to. He's got to say it. He's got to say it. 
you know, if we're doing T-shirts, I could do uh, effing. <laughs> Over here. Paul was just in here, and uh, I asked him about his original approach for you back in 2015 where you were supposed to fight. Mm -hmm. So I guess now that you're in here, what was you and your team's original pr approach to fighting Paul? Um, I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, you know, that was 2015. That was not, that was like uh, the, uh, the dark ages for me, unfortunately, you know. So uh, there, was, there was a period that was, that, that I don't have a lot of memories of, about, and that was one of them. Um, so, yeah, uh, I remember preparing for him to be a good striker and throw a lot of kicks and spinning stuff. And, you know, he fought some of my, my training partners on lo the local circuit and stuff like that. So we had a little, um, uh, you know, a, a little scouting on him. But, uh, you know, that was like, there was time in between that. And obviously, you know, we're looking at nine years. So it's a totally different fight nowadays. Fair enough. And I, I know uh, UFC 300 is kind of like a bucket list thing for you in the fight game. So once you get that done, is there another bucket list item, maybe like fighting a specific place or specific opponent before it's all settled? Uh, I want to fight. Uh, I want to fight back home uh, once more. You know, I, I would like to fight at the Prudential Center. Um, uh, I think that would be uh, bring things kind of full full circle. You know, it, MSG might suffice, but you know, like I'm I'm from New Jersey, so I'm not I'm not from New York. Uh, and and if we're going to be honest, the New York Commission is a pain in the ass to work with. So, uh, you know, yeah, I, I'd like to fight closer to home so that, you know, more of my uh, training partners and, and family and friends can come, you know, share uh, one of, you know, one of or the last, you know, fight that I have. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. I know when you first sat down, you, you said you weren't done yet, but you said maybe another year. I don't know if that meant you know, 2024 in general, by the end of the year, maybe this could be that year that, you know, if you if you kind of hit those goalposts, mm. has your mind started settle on the fact that this could be the end year? And if not, I know you manifested, you talked about UFC 300 yeah. so many years ago, yeah. and it was right around the corner. Just want to throw out that if 2005 was, you could make 20 years if you make it to 2025. <laughs> 65? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Got to love that. <laughs> so, I mean, you did say sort of maybe a year. So, I don't know if in your brain you've already started wrapping around possibly then in this year. But next year, if you make it to 2025, that's 20 years. That That'd is. be pretty cool as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, you know, I, I've, been, I've been playing it kind of fight by fight at this point. You know, like it, it's, uh, you know, I've said it plenty of times before that I, I look at every uh, – Every opportunity that I get to fight after, you know, uh, like 200, right? UFC 200, UFC 196, just around then as a gift, man. Like I'm, I'm super appreciative to be able to do this, and to continue to be able to do this. And and I know that it's it's not typical. It's definitely atypical to to be able to go through the camps, to go through the fights, uh, and and to be able to continue to on the in a, a difficult athletic endeavor. Uh, you know, as a 40 year old, especially as a lightweight. Um, so like, I'm just happy to be here. Like I, I was, uh, you know, I'm in the back and I'm like ear to ear, you know, cheesing it up. Um, so uh, yeah, like who, who knows? Who knows what's gonna, you know, when the last one's gonna be at this point. Um, there's there's definitely, the, the talks have been going on with me and my wife and, and uh, yeah, like, we're, we're, we're preparing for it. We're preparing for uh, the day that I'm, I'm not fighting anymore. You know, the, the toughest part is that like when I, when I do get a fight nowadays, it's like, I gotta be all in, yeah. you know? So, um, you know, and, and, and still all in with the, the kids and stuff like that and the family. So like, this was a, this was a difficult camp for me, you know, uh, helping the boys out with, with wrestling, coach and wrestling. And, and, you know, I, my oldest is in basketball and, you know, the, my, my other daughter's in dance, so my wife's always there with dance with her. So we're like two ships in the night, uh, you know, once, uh, once like five o'clock hits. So packed all my, my training into, you know, Monday through Friday and, and, you know, during the day when the kids were at school and it was, uh, there was nothing else getting done. So, you know, that's the tough part is like that transition to life after fighting, uh, 
I have to be able to be working on that. And uh, you know, now that I've got a couple weeks before I have to ramp it back up, uh, I'll, I'll be focusing on that type of stuff and uh, trying to trying to ease the transition, you know, into into the next uh, next stage of my professional career. Which has got to be still kind of crazy because you're having these moments of brilliance in, in a lot of your recent fights, and it's got to be, here we are saying, well, you're, you're obviously done soon, and, mm. and you're pulling out magnific magnificent things Mag that we've seen. That I mean, it's got to be a weird thought in your head, like, is it really time? <laughs> well, you know, when, <laughs> when, when you get up and you're like, like on fight day, and I'm like, oh my God, like I'm so sore, you know? Like I didn't do anything yesterday. I, I cut a little weight, but my low back was all tight. So uh, I, I can turn it on for 15 minutes. Uh, I could turn it on for 25, given the opportunity. Um, but yeah, it's it's harder. It's definitely harder, and I and I feel it. And you know. Uh, uh, it's it's all the things that you guys don't see and you know like the the performances inside the octagon it's that's that's me at my uh you know in my world in my realm and in what i was made to do right so um it's all the little things you know outside of that where uh it, that that make it a lot more difficult you know being a 40 year old yeah we just got to keep you away from picking up things in the kitchen yeah exactly stuff. right you know like just wheel me around and uh, yeah, just push me onto the mat twice a day, you know, maybe onto the bike once and uh, yeah, that and then back to bed. <laughs> awesome. Well, congrats on the victory. It was Thank you. one heck of a performance. Thank you very much. Thank you guys.